I joined the Kickstarter for the Dig Medi 5 back in July 2022. A year and a half later, and here we are. The Defy keyboard from Digma is a split ergonomic, calm layout based keyboard, which is hot swap. It's got RF connection, it's got Bluetooth connection, and you can also use it wide. It's got more lights than Las Vegas, and it's got enough thumb switches to keep a Rubik's Cube addict happy. So let's take a look and see if this might be your endgame keyboard. Now, Digma is big on appearance, and even though the cardboard packaging that it comes in comes Digma branded, it comes with this lovely carry case, this sort of hard. Sadly, the Digma case does not have a carry handle, so if you were thinking you could stroll into the office like 007... We're issuing this to all 00 personnel. That's not going to be the case. It's roughly the same sort of size, width and height as, say, a 15-inch MacBook Pro. Inside, everything's presented very nicely, although you do get this sort of loose foam insert in here, which I'm not quite sure whether you're supposed to keep that in place or discard it. If you're supposed to keep it in there, it's a little bit annoying, to be honest. I've kept it in there just to keep everything as, as pristine as possible. Aesthetically, I feel like the Defy skews to sort of a younger audience. It's got this sort of sleek, sort of slight incline appearance, and obviously a bazillion lights on there. You know, this is probably the first split keyboard that my teenager could leave on his desk when his friends come round uh, and not be too embarrassed. It's got this whole kind of like boy racer feel going for it. Uh, I think it's going to be just as popular with gamers, perhaps even more so, than it will be with programmers. Now if I was to spec up this model that I've got here on the Digma website, it comes in at about $605, which is an eye-watering amount of money for a keyboard. So let me tell you what you actually get for that. All the Defies have got an aluminium top plate and a plastic bottom. You've got 62 keys that are MX, all your sort of normal keys there. And then on the bottom of your thumb cluster here, these are actually Kale low profile switches. Across the two sides you've got a total of 70 keys to go out of which 62 of those are standard MX and 8 of the Kale low profile. All the keys have LED lighting and it's ABS laser etched keycaps. Now all the Defies also get the case, the palm pads, they get 5 USB leads and a USB C to A adapter. You also get a keycap and switch puller, a set of thin and thick O-rings to stick on the underside of your keycaps so that can just sort of change the feel and sound signature of the keys as you press them. You also get a set of test switches and a microfiber cloth. So that's what you get a stock. In this model I've got here, I've also got the upgraded, uh, I've got the underglow lighting, I've got the tenting kit, and I've got the RF wireless connection. You could also be far more conservative when you order your Defy. And if you go for the, just the standard wired model, if they're in stock at to Digma, you can pick those up for $329. I'm gonna assume you spec this thing up, you know what you want. What is it actually like? In almost every way, the Defy is a very, very solid product. It's got a really pleasing heft to it. There's no sort of rattling going on at all. It feels completely rigid, and I can't see any sort of blemishes in this top uh, anodized aluminium either. These palm pads are actually magnetic, and they work very similarly to the ones on the Advantage 360. Where this has got a slight edge, as you can just see, it's got this slight sort of um, texture on the back. And that actually does really help those pads stay in place as you type in on them. And you can see you've got four main rows of keys um, and six columns. Well, actually six and a bit, because this sort of innermost column here, the seventh column, is actually made up of three keys. You've got this bank of eight thumb cluster keys as well. Now, in terms of where your hands sit, you, your, your fingers sit where you would expect there with, uh, you've got a homing bump on that key there, and on the thumb switches, your homing bump is on this key here, three in from the edge. I do appreciate the, the homing bump on the thumb keys. That would be great if that was where my thumbs actually wanted to sit, um, but it isn't, but more of that in a moment. Now, the only, the only thing that really feels a little bit sort of low rent on the Defy is this little wireless switch here. It's fine when it's on, but when it's off, it's just just a little bit rattly there. Um, and because I've got sort of mole hands, it's not the easiest switch to toggle, but obviously it sits nice and flush with the bottom. That's probably the right choice in terms of design. This is all top-notch stuff. You've got these nice sort of inset colour match screws here. You've got these uh, feet stuck to the, the base. Even if, you know, there's a little bit of adhesive showing in the odd spot, but, you know, nothing to be concerned about. And then with this model, we've got this built-in um, tenting. You can see the different things here so that you can get your normal sort of tenting or your inverted tenting. But that, with the, with the pads and the heft, it's absolutely solid on the desk. You know, that, that thing is not moving around while you type. So that's all good news. 
So you, you pull these feet out and look, you can see the bottom of here has got uh, markings on here for the different angles and you can go from five up to 60 degrees with these markings. When I'm actually typing with the board, it's rock solid. Um, you know, there's no wobble at all. When you consider that that tenting is built in there, all into that chassis along with all the lighting, the RF connection and the Bluetooth, you know, that's, that's quite a feat of engineering. So I've got to applaud Digma for that. I started with the Defy Wired and I suggest you do too because that's the simplest way of getting the Bascore software up and running so you can configure the keyboard. Before you can get running with Bascore, you need to plug it in and that might not be as straightforward as it sounds. Sweet Jesus on a bike, Mary on the handlebars and Joseph in the basket. It took me, no exaggeration, about 20 minutes to realise that when you connect the neuron, which at this point I was calling the moron, when you try and connect this to your computer, it has to be connected a certain way. You can see this thing here has got, this, this is the Neuron for the wireless version, and you've got three USB ports, USB-C ports on this thing, okay? But the thing is, the cables, you can't just plug them in willy-nilly, they have to be connected a certain way. So, here's the takeaway. The side that's got the logo on needs to be connected to the computer, and the other two you can connect to whichever side of the Defy that you want. Um, I really hope Sigma can get this marked up with future editions just to cut out that whole bit of confusion. But with all that monkeying around with the cables out the way and set up, once you do actually get the Defy connected, it really is a feast for the eyes because even for a miserable git like me, the lighting on display really is quite mesmerising. In this instance, I've got the underglow option as well. So beside the 70 LEDs on the actual keys, there's a, uh, over 100 LEDs in this underglow section as well. Naturally, not being a teenager myself, after 30 seconds I turned them all off, but it really was quite nice for a short while. But if lighting is your thing, this is the new champion of split keyboard lighting. And you know, I can imagine scenarios where there's some practical use cases for this. For example, changing the underglow colour when you switch layers, for example. To configure the Defy, uh, you use Bazcore, which is their native application, which I believe is a fork from the Chrysalis application that the Keyboardio company created. And they both use uh, kaleidoscope firmware, so not ZMK or QMK, which is probably the more common firmwares that you tend to see on programmable keyboards. Now, when I first plug it into Bazcore, I got uh, a firmware upgrade notification, you know, to, to upgrade the firmware on the board. Now, typically, firmware upgrades aren't something you want to take lightly, so I went through the process of upgrading the firmware, and it just kind of hung, and I was just left on an empty screen. I just waited and then I was thinking, well, how long am I supposed to wait for this thing to complete? Is it five minutes? Is it a day? And after, you know, a considerable amount of time, probably 15 minutes, something like that, I hopped onto the, the Digma Discord to try and find out what was what. Well, it turns out if this has happened, it has actually crashed and it's perfectly safe to disconnect, close the, the Bascore software, reconnect everything, start Bascore up again and reflash the firmware. When I did it the second time, it went absolutely smoothly, and in short order, it flashed both sides of the keyboard, and I was up and running. So that initial process was a little bit lacking, but once I did actually get up and running with Bazcore, I've got to tell you, I'm quite a big fan. Bazcore, like the Chrysalis software it's based on, doesn't run on the web. It's a native application, and the main benefit is the fact that you don't have to flash a file to your keyboard. Well, at least not in a sense that you recognize. You basically just, Program your keyboard, click save, and the file's automatically sent to your keyboard, even over RF, which I found absolutely staggering. It's such a tight feedback loop as you start programming your keyboard. It's absolutely lovely to not have to get a file and you know drag it across to somewhere, or you know, you don't even have to press a reset switch. You just click save and it's instant. If that tight feedback loop wasn't enough, Another area where Bazcore really shines is it's just very, very accessible for beginners. If you're new to programmable keyboards, this is about as easy um, as configurators for keyboards get. Now, this wonderful simplicity does have a flip side. When you want to do something a little bit more complicated, it typically takes a little bit longer in Bazcore than it would in something like Oryx um, or one of the ZMK configurators. So when you want to do something like auto shift or you want to set a dual use key, you know, so it's one key when you tap it um, and another key when you hold it, that requires creating what Digma's calling super keys. Now it's not a big deal, it's just a little bit more long-winded. You have to make an individual super key for each of those keys that you want to create and then map that to a position on the keyboard. So yeah, it's a little bit more involved, you know, something like 
auto shift for example in Oryx for the Voyager is just a toggle switch whereas for this you need to make an auto shifted version of each of the keys that you want to auto shift. Now there is a further limitation currently which might be a bit of a deal breaker and that is when you create dual use keys you can only set them with a single modifier. So for example I like to have my home row modifier keys um, here and what I like to do is I have my shift, command, alt and control but then I also like to have this key for hyper and at the minute you can't have a hyper key there or a dual use key because when you hold that in that would require the use of all those other modifiers at once and Bazcore just doesn't support that at the minute. Actually it's worse than that, it seems to support it, it allows you to set it in the, the Bazcore software but it doesn't actually work. Um, now that's something Digma is aware of and they're saying they're actively working on that so hopefully at some point in the future you'll be able to set your home row um, you know your hyper key on one of your home row keys if you want to. For the vast majority of people that's not a big deal there's obviously there's plenty of other keys if you do use a hyper key for anything you can set it somewhere else but if you're particularly keen on having your hyper on one of the home row keys just be aware of right now that is not possible. Another limitation of Bazcore is combo keys that's the thing in ZMK or QMK where you press two or more keys simultaneously and it gives you a different key output, you know, so you might press your two NMOS keys and that gives you escape, for example. That isn't currently a thing in Bascore, so if that's something you rely on, be aware that you can't do that currently. Now, here comes possibly the most contentious part of this review. We need to talk about those thumb keys. Now, like the Glove 80 and Digma's earlier keyboard, the Raze, the Defy has two heights of thumb keys, unlike the Glove, which manages those heights with the actual... Um, the molding of the casing. Digma handles that by actually using different sorts of key switches. So the top one here are using typical MX switches which are the same keys that you see above here and the bottom ones are using the chock, the KL chock switches which are much lower and that's how you get that slightly different height there. Now the different switches they do feel very very subtly different but quite honestly um, I've got linear switches here, speed coppers um, along with the, I presume, brown um, kale switches at the bottom and it's fine, I can't really tell a difference and I'd be surprised if anyone else could really tell a difference what I mean by difference is you can tell it's different but it doesn't feel horrible like you just forget about it and you use the keys fine where I do have a problem is in the number and the placement of the keys in this thumb cluster this is where Digma expects your thumb to rest by default and you, you know that because of the, the homing bar on that thumb switch there now that would be great if that was where I wanted my thumb to rest, but it isn't. I actually want my thumb to rest about here. Well actually, between those two keys here. Now maybe I have a wider grip from throttling my children. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't want to get my hands dirty. The point is, only those two NMOS keys are comfortable for me in a resting position. In fact, between those two keys is the most comfortable. But if I had to choose, it would be that innermost one. Now here's the Voyager on top of the Defy, and I find the main Voyager thumb key in a very comfortable position. And you can see that it actually sits above those two keys. For me, any but those and the two um, keys there is sort of contorting my grip inwards. You know, as I start to bring my thumb in here, I, I'm kind of, you can see I'm kind of having to tuck my thumb underneath my palm there. And th this was an issue I had with the dactyl manual forms I built and it ended up causing me some pain. So I certainly wouldn't be loading up any of these outermost thumb keys here. I think that's just asking for trouble. I really don't understand how anyone can make regular use of these outermost thumb cluster key switches here because it's really sort of tucking your palm underneath there to get to them. I think I would rather have just not had those keys there or, you know, get four keys that come straight down below there and then maybe you could have an arrow cluster there instead um, or, or nothing at all but I just feel like keys here that you know promote you tucking your thumb underneath your palm to use constantly is just inviting problems. Now it's right and fair that we talk about hand size here because there's a good chance that somebody with different hand size or more dexterous thumbs for example this might just not be a problem at all. So I am 20 centimeters from there to the tip of my finger and from the middle of that crease there to the end of my thumb is about 15 and a half centimeters. So have a think about that, you know, measure yourself. Um, and if you've got similar size hands to me, then maybe this won't be the best fit for you. So that leaves me a little bit uneasy with the Defy thumb cluster in that regard. I just, I defy anybody 
to tuck their thumb under regularly and be comfortable doing that it just seems like a recipe for problems down the line. So look, right, there we go. That's my gripes with the thumb keys. I want to move on now and tell you about some things about the Defy I really do appreciate. The Defy feels absolutely great to type on. Um, I've got the speed copper switches in this one and it feels absolutely solid. There's no, there's no hollowness at all, you know, in this case. And that gives it a lovely, nice fockiness. Like I say, the, these switches are stock. I've not done anything to them yet. It already sounds and feels really good. I imagine if you if you hand loop these switches, this would feel and, and sound absolutely sublime. With your palms on these palm rests here, you've got a very nice sort of straight line with your wrist here. No problems there at all. That's that's really comfortable. You know, there's no sort of horrible tilting of your wrist in any way. It's just nice and flat, nice flat line across the pads there. It's still pretty comfortable without that palm pad on there. But just be aware, for a pampered reviewer like me, this aluminium is a little bit cold compared to wood or plastic. So I like to keep myself comfortable. I keep the palm pads on there, and I find that's really really nice to type on. As I mentioned before you can see that the the Defy isn't completely flat like something like the the Moonlander. It's got this incline uh, from top to bottom. Now I haven't found that to be uh, a hindrance or a help really. Um, it's just an observation. Either way it gives it this nice aggressive and sleek look. And if you do look side on you can notice a, a, a subtle detail there with the keycaps. So you can see on the top row there which is your, your numbers by default you've got a different row profile. And that's useful because as you're using the board like that, it just gives you a bit of tactile feedback that you've gone to the top row there. In terms of overall height, the Defy is about 35mm off the desk at its highest point and about 24.5mm off the desk at its lowest point. Now that in itself, don't get hung up on that because all that really matters is the difference between where your wrist sits and where your palm sits. And as I've, as I've shown you there, that's really super, uh, you know, it's, it's like that, it's really nice and comfortable. It's only really a consideration if you're in a sort of situation where you don't have a height adjustable desk and you want something that's as close to the desk as possible. If that's the sort of scenario that you're in, you want something super low to the desk, then the Defy is easily beaten by things like the Voyager. The model I have here has got the, the black keycaps, and as I mentioned, these are ABS with laser etched legends on them. It's perhaps a bit difficult to see in this lighting, but you can make out the legends without the lighting on these keycaps, but it's, it's quite subtle. If you like something that's got a very distinct legend on there, either you need to keep the lighting on if you go for the black keycaps, or go for a different keycap colour with a more obvious legend on there. So they look and sound great. Personally, I prefer a, a rougher texture on the keys and probably PBT, because these will shine over time. But plenty of people will prefer this. These are smooth and they do have a nice sound and feel um, ABS plastic. Again, that's not a criticism of these keycaps, that's just a preference. Just be aware that you've got standard MX keys on all these here, um, but these are all bespoke molds, these thumb switch keys. So I think Defy, uh, I think I'm right in saying that they've um, released the, the files for these, so you could print your own if you wanted to, but they are gonna be far more difficult to come by um, than the standard keycaps you get elsewhere. Another negative though is that you don't get extra homing keys for alternative layouts like Dvorak or Colmac. And given the amount of other stuff that you get that I just have no use for, like the extra switches and the O-rings and all that kind of carry on, I would have much rather have had some homing keys for alternative layouts. To use the Defy in RF mode, you leave the neuron connected to the computer and you flick the switches on on the other side of each side of the board. However, much like the initial setup with Wired, I had difficulties with RF too. I kept replugging in the neuron, turning the switches on and off, and I just couldn't get it to take. And then eventually, after about six attempts, it did take, and then it connected well. However, despite the initial problems, I do think RF is really, really good. It's lovely to be able to just turn on the board and have it instantly connected without the usual sort of pairing shenanigans. And obviously, if you're a gamer, it's particularly good because you lose a lot of the latency that you get with Bluetooth. So I wish more keyboard manufacturers would include RF because it seems like the best compromise against the, the nice aesthetics but problematic pairing of Bluetooth and the rock solid, the rock solid stability of wires 
um, but the, the more ugly aesthetic. If you do use wireless along with the lights, just be aware that that's gonna suck the battery life considerably. Each side of Defy has got a 2,370 milliamp hour battery in there, but if you're using the lighting with it, that's not gonna last forever. Despite what, for example, the buggy Bazcool software was telling me was going on with the batteries, that's not the case. For example, I ran it um, with RF for a couple of days, came back and looked in Basco and it was still telling me that the left hand side was 100% and the right hand side was 99. I knew that wasn't the case and when I connected it by Bluetooth instead that was showing me a percentage of 37%. So take the, the values in Basco with a grain of salt at the minute, on the, well, particularly on the version that I am which is like 1.3.8. Uh, the point is if you're running it wirelessly and you've got all the LEDs going, it is going to suck the battery a lot quicker. Now, Bascool has got some smart settings in there that help mitigate this. For example, you can have settings that are specific to when it's wireless to reduce the intensity of the LEDs. And the lighting is so good on the Defy, I found I was able to set that to 10, 15% on there, and it was perfectly fine. Uh, you could also set it so that when the Defy is wireless you just don't have any lighting going on there at all and that will extend the lifetime of being able to use it wirelessly tremendously the other way to connect the defy we've looked at wired we've looked at rf the other way is good old bluetooth now just like the other connection methods i had problems with bluetooth initially on the mac when i connected unlike the literature on the defy website which said you just connect the neuron to the back of the defy and its little holdy port you turn on the sides and you go and connect it by Bluetooth. Well, in Mac OS, there was an extra step and when I tried to connect to Bluetooth, it would pop up and give me a six digit challenge code, which I had to input on the keyboard. And no matter how many times I tried to do that, it was failing. Well, long story short, it turns out that currently in Bascore, in order for you to enter that six digit code, your numbers need to be just plain straightforward numbers. So the options were either roll back to an older version of the firmware and lose all my mappings, or add another layer which just had standard digit uh, maps on them. So that's what I did, went in and tried it again and it went through absolutely fine. So this is another bug that Digma are aware of, they're working on that and there's a very good chance by the time you read this, this won't even be a problem. So nothing really more to say about the Bluetooth, you can connect it to multiple devices, it works absolutely fine and all the time that I've been using it, but honestly, given the choice, I'd go for RF every time just to get that reduced latency and that faster connection when you turn it on. On the subject of support, Digma has got a really, really good Discord server going on. I mean, I never, I always prefer an online forum over Discord just because Discord's kind of hidden away and non-searchable, but it's a very active Discord server. Uh, you can always go on there and get help, not just from Defy, but there's a bunch of um, experienced users on there which provide you feedback and help as well but Digma are very good stewards there you know the, there's nothing I've seen asked um, or queried on there that a representative of Digma hasn't come and addressed somehow so I don't have any concerns there in terms of support that these sort of hardware sorry these software issues I'm talking about won't get sorted and you won't get the help that you need if you use the discord server or the email the Defy also comes with a pretty generous two-year warranty so I think you're in safe hands. Right, let's wrap this up. If you want a really sleek looking uh, split column, column layout based keyboard that can do RF, it can do Bluetooth, it can do wired, and it's got this incredible set of, of lighting with it, this is the keyboard for you. Hardware wise, Defy is a solid board and nearly every aspect of it is very well considered. The tenting is generally elegant and built in. You know, it's got the hot swap switches, the palm pads, uh, really solid and secure in use and it also comes with that lovely case to keep everything in pristine condition. My only significant reservation with the Defy is those thumb clusters. Look, it's possible I'm just not getting it but for me there's just too much going on there, there's just too many keys and they're not in the perfect position for my physicality. I'd rather have some standard keys uh, below that I can move my fingers down to from the home row or just no keys at all. Um, but for me, it's kind of almost like a solution looking for a problem. I also had a fair amount of problems getting the Defy up and running, whether that was wired, wireless, uh, you know, in terms of RF or Bluetooth. I think Digma could really simplify things with the wireless neuron if they actually labelled which port goes to which part. You know, and the software, the Bascore version that I've been running on, has been a little bit flaky. That's at 1.3.8. So, you know, there's teething problems there for sure. But when it does work, Bascore is a delight. You know, that that ability to have that super short feedback loop of setting your key, 
saving it and being instantly on the keyboard is an absolute delight to use. So look, it's very early days for the Defy, and I, I really believe that a lot of these software issues are going to get sorted out pretty quickly. But if you're getting your keyboard right now, just be aware that there is some flakiness, you know, that there is some things that don't quite work properly just yet. So perhaps in the same way I spoke about Digma's other board, the Rays, I can appreciate that there's an awful lot to like about the Defy. You know, it's perhaps the biggest feature set of any of the split keyboards that you can have. But the truth is, it just isn't the best keyboard for me. The things that the Defy excels at aren't the things I'm particularly bothered about. You know, this sleek look, the fancy lighting, I'm just too old to appreciate that. And the big thing for me is the thumb clusters, they just don't work well for my physicality. But that doesn't mean that it won't work perfectly well physically for you. So look, there's a good four or five solid, really solid keyboard choices now in this sort of split ergonomic area and the Defy is another one of those. All these boards, you know, the Defy, the Glove, the Voyager, the Moonlander, all those boards have different strengths and weaknesses and it's impossible for a reviewer like me to tell you categorically which is the best one. It really is a case of weighing up what you need and deciding what is the best one for you. I was threatening to stop these keyboard reviews but that's when I thought I was out. They pulled me back in. And a keyboardio model 100 has just turned up, so I'll probably look at that in the next one. See you again sometime.